Hi, it's me, Jaden Davis, the dinosaur expert. It's been a while since we last did a video talking about the displays in here, but for today, I'm going to talk about Ankylosaurus and the evolution of the armored dinosaurs, starting with Ankylosaurus itself. Ankylosaurus was one of the last non-bird dinosaurs to ever live at the end of the Cretaceous period, and it was also the largest and the last Ankylosaur ever to live. Now, you may have seen this in some popular media, like the Jurassic World movies, including the series Camp Cretaceous, that Ankylosaurus is a large armored dinosaur with these armored osteoderms embedded in the skin and the bone-shattering club at the end of the tail. Though, this model that we have here at the museum is a little bit outdated, like the osteoderms all along this body are not as big or spiky as they really were. The osteoderms were like smaller and more round, so I had smaller, rounder osteoderms all along the body, and the head is more wider than that because Ankylosaurus and all of its other club-tailed relatives had more wider snouts, so this model is a little bit outdated, but it has all the other characteristic features, right? Quadrupedal stance, because ankylosaurs and most other ornithischian dinosaurs were quadrupedal, especially with all this armor on their back, and of course we got the characteristic tail club at the end of the tail. The ankylosaur dinosaurs first appeared around the late Jurassic period, like Mimorapelta and Gargoylosaurus are one of the earliest ankylosaur dinosaurs. Long before this, in the early part of the Jurassic period, is when the armored dinosaurs started to evolve, and they started out as small animals, like Scutellosaurus from the early Jurassic period, which has these little armored osteoderms that are smaller than a bottle cap. That was one of the first armored dinosaurs to appear, and then you got Scalitosaurus from England, which was a bigger animal and had small osteoderms all along the body. So these were the earliest ancestors of the Ankylosaurs and their close relatives, the Stegosaurs. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know that. Stegosaurs are the dinosaurs with the plates and spikes on their backs, like Stegosaurus, so they're very close relatives. But the Ankylosaurs were more heavily armored, thanks to all this keratinous armor embedded in the skin, which was pretty much predator-proof, because this armor is very unpenetrable, so if a predator tried to attack its armor, it would literally break its teeth out. And ankylosaurs, of course, needed all this armor for protection against predators, which is why a lot of other modern-day animals have protective features, like tortoises and turtles with their shells, and armadillos with their shells when they roll up. All that armor is pretty much for detection protection, excuse me, and also maybe for display too, like ankylosaur dinosaurs could like flash their armor to onlooking mates, although based on fossil record they weren't that much social. So far no paleontologist has ever found an ankylosaur bone bed, so these animals were mostly solitary animals, not that much social, but they still had ways of mating and reproducing because they spread out throughout the Jurassic period and remain so for the rest of the Cretaceous period. So they had some way of finding mates and reproducing and diversifying into many different species. Other club-tailed ankylosaurs closely related to ankylosaurus are North American forms like Anodontosaurus and Euophocephalus, including Asian relatives like Tarkia and Panacosaurus. So they were pretty much widespread in the Northern Hemisphere in North America, Europe, and Asia. Although, recently, just last year, in 2021, they found an ankylosaur dinosaur in the southern hemisphere in Chile, which is in Argentina, South America, called Stegoros. Now, this ankylosaur dinosaur is about only six feet long, so it's not that big, and it had a weaponized tail. Like, there were a bunch of osteoderm spikes all along the tail, which it definitely used as a weapon. And finding that in the southern hemisphere it's telling us something that ankylosaur dinosaurs were more widespread than we previously thought. So since they found Stegoros in South America, it's probably based on fossil material that has been ignored for so many years. So since they found an ankylosaur dinosaur, I'm pretty sure they have even more species to discover there. It's just that the fossil record was just so poor over these years, and now just last year they now finally named a new ankylosaur dinosaur species, so they were more widespread than we thought now, thanks to that new fossil discovery. And I thought Gastonia, which is an ankylosaur from the early Cretaceous period, had the spikiest tail. Now Stegoros is a contender with Gastonia. But speaking of Gastonia, yeah, that belongs to a group of ankylosaurs called the Nodosaurids. Those ankylosaurs don't have tail clubs at all, but instead they have spikes over their shoulders, and some of them, like Gastonia and Stegoros, have spikes all along their tails, which they definitely would have also used to wave and attack. 
predators. So Gastonia needed all that armor to uh, attack the Utah Raptor, which is a large dromaeosaur, a raptor dinosaur that lived in the same habitat. So yeah, ankylosaurs pretty much needed all that armor to protect themselves against the predatory theropods. But in the case of the big club-tailed ankylosaurus, ankylosaurus, like ankylosaurus, they need to protect them from the big tyrannosaur dinosaurs. Whenever there's wherever there's a club-tailed ankylosaur, there's always a big tyrannosaur like. Gorgosaurus and Zool, which is an ankylosaur dinosaur named after the Ghostbusters movie, Euopocephalus and Albertosaurus from the Dinosaur Provincial Park Formation in Alberta, Canada, Ankylosaurus and T. rex from the Hell Creek Formation, and it, also in Mongolia you've got Tarkia and Tarvosaurus. So whenever there's an ankylosaur there's always a big tyrannosaur wanting to hunt and eat them, though they haven't found much like bite or claw marks on any ankylosaur dinosaur species because of their armor. That's why they would usually prefer to like take down other easier prey like ceratopsians or hadrosaurs. Though maybe tyrannosaurs probably hunted these because they weren't well experienced with the ankylosaurs. So tyrannosaurs who weren't well experienced with the ankylosaur dinosaurs would likely have hunted them. And here's the, here's the thing about the tail club. I said that the tail club is bone shattering and it really is. So paleontologists have been trying to figure out how could an ankylosaur use these to smash things. That's been a debate over the years, but they had to test that idea if they really could. So they used a technique called finite element analysis. So this is the study of stresses, like what engineers used for bridges and stuff, to go over all the stress points. And scientists use the same type of technology to study prehistoric animals like the dinosaurs, like their bite forces and their movements and their tails. And so they tested that on an ankylosaurid dinosaur, which is Zool from Montana, and they tested it to see if its bony tail club could really do smash things with a lot of force to break stuff and the results were incredible. It turns out that the tail was very flexible and that big bony mace could use it to swing a lot of force since the tail was very flexible. And looking at the stress points, it didn't really have a lot of stress on the club. So that's when they learned that ankylosaur dinosaurs could really smash things with bone shattering force without any damage to the club since it's made of hard osteoderms all fused up together. So. And that's how we know that ankylosaur dinosaurs really use their tail clubs for defense, thanks to FEA, or finite element analysis, however you want to call it. And ankylosaurus, like I also said, lived at the very end of the late Cretaceous period, so witness that asteroid falling down from the sky when the Cretaceous ended, and it was one of the last non-bird dinosaurs to ever go extinct, until it was discovered millions of years later in 1906 by American paleontologist Barnum Brown from the American Museum of Natural History. He was the first person to find the ankylosaurus fossils in the Hell Creek Formation, which is the same area that he found the first T-Rex skeleton. Although his first reconstruction wasn't really accurate, he gave it the limbs of a stegosaur, which are the front limbs are shorter than the back limbs, and he didn't give it the tail club. That was before he found the tail club. So he found a much more complete specimen when he came back to the American Museum in the 1900s. And in 1908, that's when he named Ankylosaurus, meaning fused reptile because of the fused armor on the body. And ever since then, Ankylosaurus hasn't been given that much popular media like Tyrannosaurus or sauropods. Usually everyone loves to see a theropod like a T-Rex or an Allosaurus on the big screen, or a big sauropod like a Brachiosaurus, a Diplodocus, or a Brontosaurus in a movie, but Ankylosaurus haven't given that much attention. They were featured in the Jurassic World movies, including the series Camp Cretaceous, where a character named Ben befriended a female Ankylosaurus named Bumpy, but the stu their studies will probably do give them justice to give them more popularity. So there you have it, the evolution of the ankylosaurus and the armored dinosaurs. If you, if you like all these videos, then my buddy Chris here can always look me up and always record more new videos on prehistoric animals in here, even animals that we don't even have in this exhibit. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.